So you can see this patient uh, having, again, a nucleosclerosis grade 2 to grade 3 with a dense subcapsular cataract with a pupil of uh, 7 to 8 millimeters. A yeah, superior rectus bridal suture is done and then the globe is slightly moved down and then you start your conjunctival and tenon dissection. Roughly you need uh, 8 to 9 millimeters of clearance. So you undermine under the tenons and then you do one cut and then the second undermine happens and then mostly it, two or three times you can do the conjunctival tenon dissection. It is very important to cauterize the bleeder, especially the bleeding points. So whenever you see a bleeding point, you place the forceps contrary on top of the bleeding points and make sure the scleral blood is clear of blood. Because when you start a tunnel and there is a lot of bleeding there, you know, it makes your scleral tunnel construction difficult, which is very important for the rest of the steps to run smooth. So once you have done a good cautery, make sure your assistant uh, mops that area. And here uh, we are doing a mark of 8 millimeters using a caliper. And see that dry tissue helps you to make sure you do a good external scleral incision, which is roughly 2 millimeters from this gray area. And the side will be around 3 or 3.5 millimeters from the gray area. And then using a crescent knife, you first reassure the groove made by the 15 blade. And then your aim is going to be in the center of the sclera. So once your crescent is barely visible, you are at the right depth. You go into the clear cornea. Like if you see the clear cornea is only 0.5 or 1 millimeters into the clear cornea. And depending on the density of cataract, you make side pockets. Here I'm sure the nucleus is not very dense. So we're making a very small side pocket. So the external groove, if it is 8, the internal one will be 9 to 9.5. And then the side port incision is done for easy access of uh, sub-incisional cortex. And once that is done, use a 3mm keratome, go right in the center, make a small dimple, and then parallel to iris, enter into the anterior chamber. And I do this when you have a normal anterior chamber, which is not pressurized with viscoelastics. And then a little bit of phenocaine is injected for mitriasis. This is followed by staining the anterior capsule. Whenever you stain, it's good to keep the bubble separate and your blue separate so that you have a very good control on how much Trifon blue you are using. 0.1 or 0.2 ml is more than enough. Repeat the bubble. This repeat helps you to have a very uniform stain and also it stains all your tunnel. Your tunnel, your side port, your, if you have a second side port, everything gets stained because this blue is forced out outside through these tunnels. And then the same keratome is used. If you see carefully, you now we were looking at the external scleral groove here. Now once you have completed the external scleral cut, then you also make sure the pockets are done. So this is very important. You visualize both so that you have a nice hourglass tunnel here. The anterior chamber is again reformed with viscoelastic and then you pull the globe straight for your capsular axis. So you need to have a view like this, more straight. So you release your bridal suture and you fold the anangteva tenons near the limbus and then you have this nice exposure for a continuous curvilinear capsular axis. Here again, we are touching the pupillary margin with the axis because we need a 7 millimeter capsular axis to prolapse uh, the nucleus safely. So we are almost at the pupillary margin. We are not going beyond it. And then uh, you can see this is again a 27 gauge hydro dissection cannula. You hydro dissect at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. 
and after some amount of dissection and delineation, you can see that the one pole is off. So I'm just lifting that pole with the same cannula and then we are going to put viscoelastic under it to make sure that it is out of the bag. And then using a Sinsky hook, no, the rest of the nucleus can be wheeled. See that? You lift the nucleus and then you hold the nucleus with the Sinsky hook and then gently wheel the rest of the nucleus from the bag into the anterior chamber. And this is the time you put viscoelastics, especially below the lens, you push the iris capsule diaphragm back. Now I'm zooming down a little bit to see well and then checking the irrigating vectors. The irrigating vectors is now holding on to the nucleus. You press the lip, you start irrigating at this point. When it gets locked, you start irrigating. You can see a deep chamber happening. This is because of the irrigation. And once it is out, you stop the irrigation. If you don't stop, the lens can jump. So now you have a very controlled delivery of the nucleus by using this irrigating vectors, you know, where you combine both mechanical and the fluid pressure. And now we are using a Simco cannula to aspirate the rest of the cortex. So first uh, do it uh, for the inferior cortex like this. Carefully see the capsulorexis rim, the anterior cortical matter, and then fold the anterior cortical matter and remove it. And whenever you have sub this is a nice way to get rid of the sub cortex. Go through the side port so you have a deep chamber and you have a very controlled way of removing. And once this is done, you reform again the chamber with viscoelastic. Again, see, we can see the anterior capsular rim here. So when I'm aiming to put the lens, I would try to go under this anterior capsular rim. That's the inferior haptic. If it goes under the rim, then we can guarantee uh, in the bag insertion of intraocular lens. So uh, what I do is when I go, I j just touch the PC and then go very gently into the bag. And then with the visco, I push the optic inside the bag. And now using a Sinsky hook, you go to the haptic optic junction, move a little bit, and then using a dialing hole, you nudge the lens, the other haptic also into the bag. And now the lens is in the capsular bag. The residual visco elastic is washed with the manual irrigation aspiration. And once you have a wash of the visco elastic, you reform the anterior chamber through the side port and make sure you have a very firm globe. And once you have a firm globe, you remove the uh, bridal suture and then we need to elegantly close the scleral tunnel, the conjunctival flap over it you know, by well opposing it with a forceps cautery. And that will be the end of the surgery. Finally, you inject intracameral antibiotic, recheck how firm it is.